Strange sight in a Bourbon County tree. Fish and wildlife officials found a mountain lion. Why they say they had to kill it. Gas prices below $2 have drivers lining up for gas in parts of southern Kentucky. A fire truck crashed into a tree tonight along a central Kentucky road, injuring some firefighters. What witnesses told us they saw. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. Witnesses describe a frightening sight. Tonight, we are tracking the investigation into an accident involving a fire truck that sent some Anderson County firefighters to the hospital. A witness is telling us the fire truck ran off of Puckett Road and crashed into a tree. This picture from a witness showing what the fire truck looked like after that crash. Jordan Velines talked to a man who owns the property where the fire truck crashed. It's our top story at 11. Neighbors here on Puckett Road say they were eating dinner around 6 37 o'clock tonight when they heard a loud crash. And when they came outside to see what it was, they saw that a fire truck had it slammed into a tree after traveling several dozen feet down a ditch. We're told the Alton Station firefighters were on their way to offer assistance on another wreck near the intersection of Puckett Road and Hammonds Creek Road when the collision occurred. Broke the limb off behind it and uh, caved the whole. Uh, top of the fire truck in, and then they ended up having to come out and do the uh, to get the firemen out of the truck. Had to cut one of the firemen out of the fire truck. Neighbor Noel Cotton says the firefighter sitting on the passenger side was the one who had to be cut out, and that he seemed to have suffered the most serious injuries. But according to other neighbors, four other firefighters also had to be taken to the hospital, and soon after that, the truck was then towed away. What they did, they had to cut a couple of limbs off of the, the fire truck. It was sitting about right here. It ended up right past the mailbox here. And they ended up pulling the, uh, the tree, what was left of the tree. They pulled it up with the wrecker. Neighbors say there have been accidents on this stretch of road before, but as far as they can remember, nothing that has caused as much damage as this. In Lawrenceburg, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Kentucky State Police are investigating the crash, but so far they have not released any information. Utility workers are now in the process of checking to see if any nearby electrical lines were damaged in the crash. It is a rare sight in Kentucky, but fish and wildlife officials say they captured and killed a mountain lion in Bourbon County. Mountain lions aren't native to Kentucky. Fish and wildlife officials say it is the first one seen here since the 1800s. They say a woman walking her dog spotted the animal in a tree behind her home. A man who lives nearby told us the woman had a smartphone and had managed to take a picture of the animal. Many of you ask us why fish and wildlife officials killed the mountain lion, so we asked them that question today, and they told us they felt that the mountain lion was a threat to the public, so they had to shoot it. That is an animal that is put on this earth to, to eat, um, and it being relatively close to a, a human city, um, focal center of human activity, darting it, the time constraints involved in waiting for to get there, the decision was made to euthanize the animal, and um, it was the right decision. Fish and wildlife officials also say they didn't have any tranquilizers with them last night, and they worried that if they waited too long, the mountain lion could have gotten away and hurt someone. Fish and wildlife officials say the animal weighed about 125 pounds. They're looking into the possibility that someone had it as a pet. Tonight, we've learned a third person has now been charged in connection to a shooting outside an eastern Kentucky Walmart. Manchester police say they arrested 78-year-old Delmar Edwards yesterday. He's been charged with first-degree assault. Last week, police say that Michael Edwards and Richard Lawson got into an argument in the parking lot of the Manchester Walmart. Police say Lawson was punched and kicked before Edwards shot him. Lawson suffered serious injuries. Police charged Edwards with attempted murder and assault. They also charged Ashley Bray with assault in this case. Cooler air is moving into the bluegrass, and it could bring some snow with it. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look now at your forecast. Yeah, a lot colder air that is on top of the region as of now compared to 24 hours ago. Those numbers 
Roughly 13 degrees colder. 13, I guess, if you're not a fan of cold weather, is a very unlucky number. And that is giving us temperatures that are down into the upper 30s as of now. 38 Lexington, Frankfort. 37 cold spot into Danville, where it feels like 30 degrees. Wind chill in Lexington at 31, 28 into northern Kentucky, southeastern Kentucky. That chill is on the way. Now look and see what live first alert defender is beginning to pick up on. A little bit of pink, a little bit of white showing up here. You know what that is? That is Defender telling us that chances are we're seeing some wet snowflakes mixing in with some drizzle and the light rain showers in the parts of the region, especially here across sections of Scott County, Sadieville, down to Georgetown, about Peaks Mill and Frankfort into Franklin County. Toward the Lexington Metro, out on the west side of town, coming out of Vercells into the Bluegrass Airport area, maybe a touch of some snizzle showing up yet again. Northwesterly wind flow, not spitting out a ton of moisture, but look at all the cloud cover still to our west and northwest. That's what we have to go through as we make our way into your Wednesday. So, passing flurries around tomorrow morning, a colder start to the day into the low 30s. We'll stay in the mid to upper 30s with a blustery day as we go into the afternoon. Cloudy skies. Focus at the four Forecast guys, not just on the flurries we're at, that we're seeing tonight, but on out and out snow chances over the next week. Chris, thank you. Tonight, a central Kentucky father tells us he is dealing with an unimaginable loss the death of his teenage son. 17 year old Colton Burris died Saturday after investigators say his truck flipped over an embankment near Sadieville. He was a student at Harrison County High School and a member of the junior ROTC program there. Those who knew him say he wanted to go to college and join the military. His father works in law enforcement and says he's seen many car crashes over the years, but he says nothing could prepare him for losing his son. I've cried enough tears to float this room. It's, he was an only child, and from the time he was born, he and I, we hit it off just like no other. He says he's finding comfort in family and his son's friends. Colton's visitation will be from 5 to 8 tomorrow night at Ware Funeral Home in Cynthiana. The funeral will be on Saturday. Tonight, health leaders have an alert about a gastrointestinal illness that is going around Lexington. The Fayette County Health Department is tracking a shigalosis outbreak in the city. The health department says 150 cases have been reported this year. Health experts say normally Lexington only has two or three a year. The illness is caused by the Shigella bacteria, which is easily spread. The health department isn't sure what's caused the spike in cases. The bacteria is often spread in daycare, so daycare workers are taking extra precautions. So you just have to make sure to stay right on top of that. And again, with proper hand washing and, and sanitizing and you know, wiping down all the surfaces and things like that, when you're in a, in a child care setting, you, just, you have to just make sure that those things are priority. Doctors say the bacteria is spread through person to person contact. They say hand washing is the best way to prevent it from spreading. Bergen Independent Schools will be closed the rest of the week because of illness. The Bergen superintendent says student attendance had been dropping over the last week and fell to 80% today. Custodians will clean the schools tomorrow, but again, Bergen Independent Schools will be closed the rest of the week. Some drivers in Laurel County say Christmas came a little early this year. Their gift? Gas prices below $2 a gallon. Tonight, drivers in London are taking advantage of the lowest prices there in years. As Garrett Weimer tells us, so many drivers showed up at one gas station, the pumps stopped working. Fill it up. Right. It was a busy day at gas stations in London. It's been slammed all day long. I mean, it's been a madhouse. You've heard of Black Friday at Walmart, and it's been a Black Tuesday here. Wolfgang Mitchell certainly earning his pay with a steady line of cars since the price dropped. I'm about, I mean, even though it is kind of cool out here, where I've been moving, I'm kind of overheating a little bit. And you can't blame these drivers for filling up. That's because gas here is $1.99. The first time it's been below $2 since. I was just a young and I'd say. It's been, it's been a long time. And the gas stations show it. A worker here at the Circle K on South Laurel Road told me it was about 2 o'clock when they first dropped their prices down to $1.99. And he said by 6 o'clock they had gotten so low on their supply that the pumps stopped working. With less than a week now until Christmas, drivers like Kyle Nolan say they're thankful for this early gift. And my mom, she's in Louisville right now. I'd like to go up there and visit with her now that gas is so cheap, I'll be able to. No doubt his mother will be thankful too. In London, Garrett Weimer, WKYT.
It's something a lot of us are enjoying right now. According to AAA, the national average gas price is about $2.53. That's 80 cents cheaper than this time last year. Remember, you can find the cheapest gas prices where you live by simply going to WKYT.com. An intense search for a man accused of killing six people in Pennsylvania has come to an end. In nine minutes, the update on the investigation. And then more bad luck for an eastern Kentucky store. First a robbery. Now burglars have stolen thousands of dollars in merchandise. Tonight, the search has ended for an ex-Marine accused of killing his ex-wife and five of her family members in Pennsylvania. Police say they found Bradley Stone's body this afternoon in a wooded area not far from his home. Investigators think he took his own life. Based upon uh, what we found at the scene, we believe that he died of self-inflicted cutting wounds uh, in the center part of his body. Police say Stone killed the victims yesterday in three separate towns near Philadelphia. Investigators say he was in a legal battle with his ex-wife and he had recently been denied an emergency custody request. The couple's two children are now in protective custody. Neighbors say his ex-wife lived in such fear of Stone that she would sometimes ask the maintenance staff to check on her apartment before she returned home. Tonight, we're tracking the investigation into the death of a coal miner in western Kentucky. The State Division of Mine Safety says 34-year-old Eli Eldridge was hit by a coal-hauling car this morning, an underground mine in Union County. He later died from his injuries. Investigators say this was the second mining death in Kentucky this year. For the second time in the last few weeks, police are investigating a crime at an eastern Kentucky business. This time, investigators say burglars broke into Adams Market in Leslie County. They say the burglars stole two garbage bags full of cigarette cartons overnight. Two weeks ago, someone robbed the store at gunpoint. The store owner says she's had enough. It hurts everybody in the community. Uh, we, there's several other stores. You know, I'm sure they're waiting. Just waiting to see if it's going to happen to them and it's uh, it's just bad to think that it's people you know that does it. Police later arrested a man for the robbery but they have not made any arrests for the burglary. The store owner is offering a reward for information that leads to an arrest. A couple that admitted to a kickback scheme with an eastern Kentucky judge executive has been sentenced. According to our news partners at the Lexington Herald Leader, Kenneth and Ruth Gamble both received home detention with two years probation. Investigators say Morgan County Judge Executive Tim Conley steered work to the Gamble's construction company in exchange for $100,000 in kickbacks. And this happened during the recovery from the 2012 tornado. Conley has also pled guilty. It was one of their biggest assignments of the year, but it didn't involve any test or classroom work. Instead, students at a Louisville school helped feed orphans in Africa. Hundreds of students, along with teachers and staff at the academy at Shawnee, packed meals for the orphans. Their goal, 100,000 meals in one day. I think here, they, they get the, the, it becomes the intrinsic internal credit that they get, and that is a desire to want to help uh, and outreach for, for the community. The school ended up beating its goal. Students and teachers packed 104,000 meals. Students say they are proud of what they accomplished. They should be. Mm -hmm. The high school.